This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Mario. Mario, how are you? Not too bad, man. You? Good. Really good, bro. We've known each other a long time. Yep. We've sponsored the podcast a few times. Fire Away Pizza. Nearly mm-hmm. 160 stores all around the UK, worldwide now, actually. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable what you've achieved. Fair play. How's life? Thank you. Stressful, but um, it's fun. It's fun and stressful. Ups and downs. Do you think the more you have, the more stress that comes with it? You know what, I think once you get to a certain level, I think there can't be any more stress. You hit the, uh, you hit, not breaking point, but near near enough and then you either deal with it or, or you don't. So I think once you get to a certain level, then it's just, there's no more or less, it's just stress, 24 hours. Yeah. Are you, have you overtook Domino's? Not overtook them. I mean, they've been around for 35 years. Yeah. So they've got 1,200. Is that what they've got? Yeah, 1,200. I didn't realise they had that many. Yeah. No, nah, they're on it. Credit where is, um, hats off to them. They've done a good job. Um, but they used their little pizzas as well, to be fair. Yeah. What about Papa John's, that shop? Oh, though? yeah, yeah. They're on They're on their way down. Pizza Hut, it's all right. But they're Domino's in the main um, competition. I mean, they've been around 35 years. They've got 1,200 stores. We've been around six, seven years. We've got 160 stores. People love the fucking pizzas, don't they? Fat yeah. bastards. I'm guessing so. <laughs> Before I'm we get into so. everything, though, I always yeah. like to go back to the start with my guests. Get a bit more of an understanding about you, where you grew up, how it all began. Yeah, not too far from here, about 20 minutes away in uh, Mitcham, in South London. Lived there till a few years ago. Uh, managed to move out. Um, still, still local, but a slightly nicer area. A bit more quiet, a bit more peaceful than where I grew up. How were you at school? not good when i was there (laughs) not good um i didn't really like it until maybe teenage times when i I learned to you know make a bit of money selling sweets but apart from that and i weren't a fan of school what sort of sweets sweets everything haribo galaxy bars do you have on to entrepreneurial shop kind of skills as a kid yeah but it was more to pass the time because i wasn't it wasn't really to make money it was more to pass the time so when I when I left primary school, my mum sent me to a school a bit further out when all my mates went to another school. So I didn't know anybody. It was a way of socialising. It was a way of passing the time because I wasn't a fan of school. Um, so selling sweets, that kind of got me through school. How was your upbringing, mum and dad? Family around? Uh, mum and dad split up. There were seven of us um, in a three-bed terrace house in Mitcham, so it was a bit squashed, but it was all right. It wasn't bad. It could have been a lot worse two brothers two sisters yeah close family not very close everyone kind of doing their own thing um but managed to keep it together to an extent um it wasn't it wasn't bad it wasn't great it was you know average what what age you leave school 16 yeah any standard grades no 
No, no, unfortunately, no. Yeah. I remember on, on my last day of school, um, walking out, deputy headmaster outside the school called me over and he said, um, I thought he was going to give me a, uh, you know, word of advice, good luck. But he said, um, tuck your shirt in. And he said, you wasted your time at this school. And that was that. So uh, that was the last, um, that was the last school memory I, <laughs> I had. And then went to college just to keep my mum happy. Um, and then dropped out of that after a, a few years, a what, few months. What did you do at college? One course I did public services. Again, no idea what that was, just past the time. And then another, dropped out of that and went to another course, which was sports science and then dropped out of that. Yeah. Wasn't a fan of education, as you can probably tell. Yeah. Did you have any sort of visions of creating anything or starting anything? Because everything you've done, you never really followed through. Mm. I think it was all money related. So in the beginning, I wanted to be a footballer. Then I realized I couldn't play football. Then I wanted to be a lawyer. Then I realized I didn't have the, um, you know, intellect to do that or to follow it through. I haven't got ADHD, but <laughs> something thereabouts. So I couldn't really focus too much on, on anything sort of related to, to, to studying or, you know, so, um, so no, the answer is no. What was um, your first ever job? Paper round at school, 15. And then um, after that, Nando's. When did Nando's open? That must long have been about that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah long time ago. That was, when I was, years? that was when I was 21. So I left, I jumped, dropped out of college, dropped out of, left school at 16, dropped out of college at 17, 18, spent the next few years wasting time. And then finally got a job in Nando's, maybe about 22. How many Nando's is there, do you know? In UK? There is about, if I'm not mistaken, 150. They're all company owned. It's not, it's not like a franchise. No way. So there's yeah. more yeah. fire away than Nando's? Yeah, but Nando's is obviously big, big numbers. Why it? is Nando's so popular? Because myself, <clears throat> I always take the kids and always say to myself, I'm never coming back here. Yeah. And you end up fucking back. You know what they say, isn't it? It's uh, KFC for people that can use a knife and fork. Yeah, that's what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. That's a <fucking laughs> prime example. But it's always kept, you always see Nando's busy. Mm. You always see it busy. It's Overpriced a, chicken. Yeah, but the way Butterfly the feel chicken. and yeah. the, the, the speed, the service, service is 10 out of 10. No issues with service. Mm -hmm. you know? But is it Portuguese? Portuguese, yeah. Started in Portugal. South African, yeah. South Africa? And Portuguese, one or the other. Yeah, yeah. maybe South Africa. They franchised um, Dubai. But apart from that, they're all company owned. After school, college, kind of failing, failing, failing. Mm. What happened next? I just spent a few years just messing around with friends, getting into trouble, wasting time. And just, I didn't really need to do anything. I was living at home. I wasn't giving, apart from having to listen to my mum, you know, have a go at me. I didn't really have any issues. I didn't have any expenses apart from just going out and, you know, chilling with friends so I didn't really have, to have any need to do anything and I think once you get into that state of complacency when you don't have to do anything you don't want to do anything you know time can fly by and before you know it you know you spent three four five years doing nothing or looking for a, a get rich quick I was lazy in it so I was very lazy I'll be the first to admit it so I think that's how I can spot now lazy people that work for me because I was lazy in Nando's, in school, in college, looking for a way to just pass the time, bunk off. So, and I think no matter how much someone is on at you, whether it's your parents or, you know, your partners or whoever, unless you want to do something, like my mum was always on to me for stop smoking. And I realised that no matter what someone, how, how often someone tells you something, unless you want to do it yourself, you know, um, you, you don't do it. Anything I kind of done, younger years, teenager, I never lasted long because I would always try and skive. Mm -hmm. I would always try and get maximum with little effort. Yeah. And always. I probably still do it to this day. Yeah. So I do, Habits. but I've just mastered that a bit to a higher extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just play the game better. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to have a rest. You need to have a rest and have a day off, but you need to, at the same time, put as much effort into, you know, doing something, or getting somewhere. Yeah focusing because i think if you haven't got a focus then um time can fly past yeah. very quickly i've been everywhere this year and this is the longest we probably took off five six years took just a few weeks off man mm. just felt as if it all became not on top but just tiresome yeah. people might think it's fucking 
extravagant kind of jet style living all over the place. It's not. It's, it's really not. not isn't it? Yeah, especially when you're tired. Don't matter where you are. It'd be if you're tired yeah. and if you're exhausted. You could be on a beach or you could be, you mm -hmm. know, in the middle of Dubai, seven star hotel. If you're exhausted, you can't enjoy anything as yeah, much the as finer things you know. In life. You definitely can't. And like I said, it might look great on social media, but. Mm -hmm. You just think, fuck me, I'm tired. You gotta find a balance. Yeah. It? But saying that, I love business, I love work now, not when I was younger, but now yeah. I, I, I look forward to Monday mornings when back in the day, you know, I hated Monday mornings, but now I look forward to Monday mornings. I hate sleep, you know, if it wasn't necessary, you know, I wouldn't sleep at all. I think it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But then you get to the point, like I work early to the early hours of the morning on, on a project, wake up, you know, early six, seven o'clock, and then you can't function because you're too tired. Mm -hmm. So obviously you need to you need to you need to rest. You need to recover. Mm -hmm. Did you do anything before you started fire away? Yeah, Did you I successful opened, anything? Not successful, but I opened a little coffee shop in Tooting. Um, it cost me about five grand. I had five grand saved up, and I thought I don't want to work for someone. I want to do my own business. So I tried that, but that failed miserably in about six months. Yeah, you end up in debt. No, it was a, it was a, about the size of this room, little kiosk. A guy rented a little section of his shop, and um, all my mates were hanging around outside. I was opening up late. I'm not an early morning person, so for six o'clock to be there to catch the people on the way to work to sell them coffee didn't really work. There was a lot of competition, and yeah, six months. I said, you know what? It taught me a lot. You know, I think all mistakes teach you something, and that taught me a lot. It taught me the foundations of just business in general in mm -hmm. sort of like business accounts bank accounts tax um product procurement distribution it taught me the basics it didn't it didn't succeed it failed but in a way it taught me a lot of lessons so i suppose if you look at it like that then it was a success in some ways what's the biggest life lesson from a failed business what's the most you can take away from it that uh, not to get too big for your boots and everyone can fail i think it's very dangerous if you if you think that or if you everything that you touch you know turns to gold because yeah, it's not possible so if you have a streak of you know everything mm -hmm. being successful then i think you can when it does hit you and it hits you big and you do fail you know it can knock you off track do you feel as if you made it and you got your coffee shop yeah for the first few hours yeah. <laughs> and then i realized that it's it's not all as it cracked up to be you know i'll be honest with you when i first started the business regardless what it was, it was to work for myself, wake up when I want, go to sleep when I want, go on holiday when I want, and not be told what to do. Ironically, I didn't have time to sleep, I didn't have time to go out with my mates, you know, and uh, and when I did finally get some sleep, I had too many things on my mind, you know, to even have a good night's sleep. So ironically, having a business brought everything that I thought I was getting away from. Um, but I suppose it's good because you know nothing in in life easy is worth mm. nothing worth having is easy. You know. Why did you keep at it? Keep I trying. Keep, maybe because I didn't want. I didn't want to. Yeah, do something, fail, think, fuck that. Just get a job, mm. stay kind of working for someone. Don't want to really feel that because failures is painful. Hundred percent. I don't know. I suppose some people see failure as a knock you down, and some people see it as fuel to try something else and try harder um, because you don't want to be seen as as failing you don't want to be seen as struggling you don't want to be seen as i guess down and out if you care what other people think anyway um, which i think all of us do to an extent so i think failing at the business failing at anything um, you can use it as fuel to get up and go again or you can use it as a, a reason to stay down did you have any role models no not at that time now that I'm into the world of business, you know, and there's people that I meet at events and uh, that I talk to that I see as like yeah, successful people to look up to. I think it's not good to be the most successful person in the room. I think you need to be in a room where, you know, like a lot of people say to me, why didn't you stay in Mitcham? You could have bought a big house. You know, you could have been like the man in Mitcham. And I said, uh, for me, I'd prefer to be like where I am now. I'm probably the poorest guy on my road. You know, um, but it's it keeps you motivated, it keeps you inspired, it keeps you keeps you pushing. 
so you don't feel complacent and you know the big I am and just sit back and relax. Did you go to any seminars or anything to kind of learn business strategies, tools and techniques to no, apart educate yourself with it? No, YouTube videos, podcasts, but that's only recently, back in the day when I started six, seven years ago, I don't think there was any podcast, was there? Mm, nah, not in the They UK, weren't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so really business. Dragon's Den. They're the only, the only two programs I probably ever watched was Dragon's Den and Only Fools and Horses. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them taught About me a lot. business and laughter. Yeah, one of them taught me, you know, Dragon's Den, you see a lot of successful people that have made it business-wise and Only Fools and Horses taught me that, you know, if you fail, you just keep going. It's unbelievable. Even the people that's been on Dragon's Den who got rejected, the mm. guy with the doorbell. Yeah. It's worth a buck. Now he's a dragon himself. He went yeah, there with yeah, the yeah. Uh, ring, uh, ring, 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 ring. And uh, this says, nah. And it's worth billions. Every year it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the guy with the little trolleys where kids sit on. Yes. Rejected him. Yeah, Turned yeah, yeah. Fucking. Suitcase thing, yeah. But a lot of people they would have rejected would have turned their back and done, nah, it's not good enough. It just goes to show, isn't it? Not everyone knows everything. So even if yeah. the biggest guy in the room tells you no and you've got a persistence to try, but at the same time, you need to know when to give up. Like with the coffee shop, if I had stayed mm -hmm. there and throwed a load of money, it would have just been bleeding money. So I think it's about finding a balance, isn't it? You need to know when to give up. You need mm -hmm. to know when you haven't tried enough. And I think with all the things that I've done back in the day, I wanted to do a car wash. I wanted to do so many different things. And I gave up, but at the time I didn't see it as giving up. I was jumping from one idea to the next because I thought, oh, this is a better idea. And then I had a better idea and I had a better idea. But now I realize you can have as many ideas as you want, but unless you actually follow through and stick with it, then you're never going to know if it works. I think you need to stick at something for two, three, four years. Yeah, five if, years. Yeah. To the master it, isn't it? hundred percent. If you give up after yeah. a few months, then you're never you're just going to go around in circles. I was the same, man. I tried everything. I had a fucking foam, a uh, uh, car valet and van. I bought it off my big pal Tam, called it foaming away. Never washed one <laughs> That's car. A good name. Never washed one car. Yeah. I actually took the van to get valeted itself. It's that like, <laughs> I ended up losing money. The fucking engine was fucked. That was one of my best pals who told me that as well. But I had the visions of I'll do this, I'll charge this a bit cheaper, I'll ground all the big businesses, wash all their cars. But then I thought, fuck that. Just be, yeah. It seemed too hard to get my hands dirty. I thought there's easier ways to make money. Obviously, I've done other bad shit to make money, but. Mm. I just thought, nah, that's not me. That is too hard. I felt a legit living was too hard. And yeah, obviously yeah, I found yeah. podcast, I found my lane and then I stuck to that. And then this is what I enjoy the most out of everything I've done. I think you can work hard or you can work smart. You know, yeah. they're two different things because anyone, anyone can be busy. But I think you have to, uh, you've got to put effort into anything, innit? regardless mm. what it is. And I think even going back to when I was maybe 14, I used to drag my brothers and sisters around to wash cars. And going back to being lazy, I realized that there were certain areas where people didn't have cars. So we'd knock on the door and say, we're collecting money for a school trip by washing cars. And a lot of them said, I ain't got a car, but here's a few quid. So we'd go, I'd take, I'd go on the roads where I knew people didn't have cars. And it goes back, looking back at it now, at the time I thought I was smart, but going, looking back at it now, it was choosing the lazy, the lazy way out, you know, by yeah. not doing any work and trying to make a load of money, which yeah. is very rarely the case. Yeah, because we used to get the scratch cards. It was a scratch card, but used to there was like football teams on it. You pick a team, then scratch it at the end. Mm -mm. We used to get them. We used to get a hundred of them from Greve Sports. I used to ground all the doors and say it was for football strips. And just fucking keep the money. Nobody ever win. Yeah. <laughs> and then I used to sell the Sunday, the Sunday Mail, the News of the World on a Sunday. I used to do all the, I had a good paper round, but my mum used to, she had the car sometimes, she was doing it and that. Because I just used to love sleep. I was lazy as fuck as well. Mm. It's mad that, isn't it? It is mad. Real lazy. And I'm still lazy. Yeah. I just kind of get, I don't know why, I just wing it, wing it better. Yeah, but you are putting in obviously effort. Yeah. You can see that from mm -hmm. afar. You, you, nothing that you can build can be built without working with, even if you might you might not think you're putting you have to be put in mm -hmm. to build something what we've built you have to put in effort unless you got extremely lucky you know um, i think it has a bit of luck involved as well when 100%. you come in at the right time because when nobody's really doing it you question it mm. but the, you know the consistency with it you learn more you build more connections yeah and everything that i've built and everything that comes is with the connections that we've built where people yeah. go man i like him or i'd like to work with him or yeah and there's an understanding of network yeah it that's so, it's networking. so important i think one of the most people ask me what's the most like important thing that you can 
work on and it's communication if you can't communicate with people mm -hmm. you need to employ someone who's good at communicating because in any business unless it's like you're sitting home on a computer trading or you know you need communication you need to be able to speak to people you need to be able to read people you need to be able to put your point across to people without getting angry without getting you know you need to be articulate you need to speak to people yeah. on a level one i think people overlook that um i think you need to yeah you need to communicate mm -hmm. you need network is as they say your net worth in it so fire away pizza the idea that changed your life yeah how did that come about i weren't really doing anything i was getting tired of my mum you know even after the coffee shop it was all great and then failed and then i spent another couple of years just doing nothing again maybe it was because of the failure um, and I didn't want to fail again. So I was just messing around again. And then it got to the point where, you know, I got in a bit of trouble um, hanging around with just people doing the same thing as me, nothing nothing really productive. And um, I was involved in a car crash. I got about five grand. My grand died, left me 20 grand. So I had about 25 grand. Um, and I had a few pay slips from Nando. So I went and got a loan for just over 20 grand. And I said, I'm going to do a business. So I found a shop, very old, broken down shop in um, Rose Hill. And uh, I rented it without really thinking what I was going to do. I wanted to do a subway. Um, but at the last minute, I changed my mind because it felt like I was, again, working for someone else. Um, and then I thought, why not keep the idea, like the subway idea, but do pizza, be an Italian. My mum's Italian. My nan came over from Italy with um, 20 quid in her pocket when she was 18. Um, so that's where the food passion kind of came from. And uh, yeah, I thought, why not do a Subway, but call it Fire Away, because it would have a fire oven um, and, and do pizza. And then it worked, you know, really well. Seven years later, we got 160 stores, turns over about 60 million as a brand. 15 million from a head office kind of level from my business um, perspective and you know it's growing rapidly so yeah i suppose sometimes even without a plan you just gotta say fuck it and do it you know and see what happens who why why fire away why this idea you're not against your dominoes your pizza huts your papa john's you're not against the big hitters we don't really get it in if you know what i'm saying you'll mm. someday walk in a wee, a wee pizza shop i thought they want one I thought food would be easy, you know. I thought, look at the options. You've got tech, and I'm not a technical guy or a, a high IQ guy, to be honest. So food, I thought, was simple. So when my nan came over from Italy when she was 18, she worked as a cleaner for quite a wealthy family, saved up some money, and she bought a calf, like a proper English calf, full English breakfast. She built it up, sold it, bought another one, built that up, sold it, built another one. In total, she had about 10, one by one, one at a time. And it's just been food, being Italian, it's just been kind of in the in the family, so I thought do food it will be easy. I was very wrong. It's 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 probably one of the most stressful businesses I think out there. Food to 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 cater to customers on a um, because so many competitors, so many competitors, so much just manual work, mm. manual work. You know you've got to be there. Things go wrong. It's just it's just difficult. It's just difficult all the time. You know I remember once. I didn't have money to employ that many people, so I was doing most of the jobs myself. And I was delivering a pizza nine o'clock at night. All my mates were in the club partying, you know. Um, and I was delivering a pizza, rushing around, customers calling, complaining, speeding to some woman's house to deliver the pizza. Got flashed by a speeding camera, you know, braked. Pizza went everywhere, milk went. I just thought, fucking, this is this is what I signed up for. So. I was close to giving up, you know, a number of times. But why I continued, I don't know. And God knows, fate, maybe, I don't know. But I just, I, I didn't want to fail again, maybe, after failing the first time. And I think that's why a lot of people don't start business or don't stick at business, because they don't want to be seen as failing. They don't want to be seen as struggling. They don't want to call all their mates and family and say, oh, I've just started this. They don't want to be seen as small time. They want to be, you know, zero to a million pound a year turnover you know, overnight, which ain't the case, you know. Um, so I think that's that's the reason why I nearly gave up and why a lot of people, I'd say, do give up. They don't want to be seen as starting off or starting out. They want to be seen as the big, you know? I am. Mm. So how does it work then, building a successful shop? What's the patterns? What's the menu, staff? How do you pick 
the kind of the foods how does it all work in the beginning i blagged it most of the way to be honest we learned from the mistakes we changed the menu we changed the staff we got a good chef in from italy we came up with a, a proper uh, I didn't know what I was doing, you know, I, I didn't have any experience apart from working in Nando's. I didn't have any experience in, in food apart from, you know, eating out a lot. I didn't really have any experience. So we kind of just, I kind of just learned as I, I went along, you know, and I think sometimes that's the best way because I spent so many years saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this and making a plan and never doing it because there was always an obstacle. And I think sometimes you just have to say, fuck it and do it and, and worry about the the small details um, later. So we just kind of learned as we went along, found a good Italian supplier in North London that supplied the food, got a couple of chefs, I came up with a design for the shop, two colours, bright colours, orange and uh, black. and black, and it just went well, you know, people like the product, they like the price, the price was very cheap in the beginning, so then we kind of upped it as it was getting more successful, because it wasn't, we were busy, but we mm -hmm. weren't making any money, um, so we upped the price, we retained most of the customers, was creative with the marketing. I got involved with the marketing, done some creative kind of on the borderline, you know, out there um, uh, campaigns and just got people talking about the brand. I don't think it's the actual product. What I've learned in business is it can be any product. You know, it can be pizza, burgers, T-shirts, podcasts. It can be anything, but you have to come with a different approach, with a twist. You have to stand out from the competition. Like you said, Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza, loads of people. Why have we been successful? Um, why have a lot of pizza companies failed? And I think you have to come, you have to look at things with a different angle. I'd say so. How long did it take before you realised, okay, I've got something? Maybe after the first year when we had three stores, when one of the customers said, I like the idea, I want to do a franchise. And I said, oh, yeah, go with it. I was, I was happy that someone wanted to use my idea. So I don't think I even charged him anything like a grand. <laughs> Regret that now. Yeah. Nah, he, he done a good Has job. Has he still got that? Yeah, he's got three stores now. He's got three <clears throat> shops. He, he, his shops were more busy than mine. Um, and then we opened another one in, in Fort and Eve, and it just kind of grew from there. First year we had three stores. Second year we didn't open any stores. We just built, worked on the brand. Third year we opened a few stores. Fourth year we opened 30 stores. Fifth year we opened 48 stores in a year. So pretty much one shop a week. And then last year we opened 35. So yeah, and we got Portugal opening on Saturday. We got Turkey opening next Friday. Dubai is under construction. And we got a shop in Amsterdam that opened a year ago. So like I said, it's just pizza at the end of the day. But if you come with a different approach, then there's no reason why it can't be successful. Like you say, pizza, from failing at basically everything you've done in your life, to then opening a coffee shop, failed pizza shop, basically on its ass, to then taking it global. Like, yeah. when did you start realising, okay, and why keep pushing it? Why not set with the three shops, five shops, ten shops, and go, okay, enough, I can sit back, make a few quid a month, and eat good, to then taking it to new heights where you're competing against the biggest names. Well, I think we could have, we could have, um, we could have, I could have settled with four or five stores and made a decent income for myself and, you know, for my family, people around me. <clears throat> I don't know. Something just told me to, some people might say it's greedy, you know, and when I complain about being stressed um, or, you know, close to breaking point, you know, I remind myself that you chose this. It wasn't, you know, God that, is giving you distress or there's no, you know, people have stress for a lot of different reasons that they can't deal with, whether it's, you know, family, personal illnesses, you know, so for me to complain that I'm stressed, um, I just, I just, you know, remind myself that I'm the one that chose this. Why did I continue to open 150 shops and turn it into like a global brand? I don't know. It just felt like the, it just felt like the the right thing to do, and um, it's all happened kind of quick, six seven years. So it's not as if I've had a long time to process think it. about it. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just don't think and you just continue. Mm -hmm. uh, so how what's the procedure to franchise? If somebody wants to come in, what's as the actual procedure? Obviously, people are buying the brand, the name, but how yeah. long does it take? And do you get a percentage off it if someone franchises? So we charge ten grand. Um, they find the shop. We check it out. We check them out. Uh, make sure that they're you know suitable. 
and then they pay 150 grand and we do the rest give them the keys the shop's ready give them the training supply the goods and take a small percentage every year every month not a percentage we charge a fee so most most um, franchises they, t they take a percentage again going for the quick easy option and simple i think it's worked well uh, instead of going around checking tills and seeing if people are hiding things we just charge a set fee so regardless how much they make they pay you know just under a grand a month is that what people can do though where yeah there's always pretend, ways to, didn't it? yeah take, take cash. cash yeah there's always you know humans are um or sneaky fuckers, sneaky aren't they? Fuckers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we try to cut all that out. Everyone wants to make money. It's a business at the end of the yeah. day, isn't it? So as long as they make money, we make money. Everyone's happy. Where can you take it? Realistically, and I might change the answer in a few years, but I think in the next few years, if we can get to 500, 400 stores, I mean, if Domino's have got 1,200, you know, I could sit here and say we're going to open 1,500. But realistically, 400, 400 stores. And then globally, well, India's got more dominoes than they have in the UK. And we've sold the master franchise rights to India, to the south of India. So if that goes even half as well as it has in the UK, even if it goes a quarter as well, then you're talking pff, thousands of shops. If you've got to vet somebody before the franchise, say, yeah. everybody kind of dodgy in the UK. So if somebody was up to no good, does that go against your brand in case it gets bad, bad publicity? 100%. Or is it a case of not giving a fuck and no, just taking money? 100%. It's their business, but it's our name above the door. And it can take you five, six years to build a brand and it can take you a few minutes to ruin it. So um, back in the day, I'll be honest with you, James, we we just, for the first like couple of years, if someone said I want to open a franchise, I was like, yeah, fantastic, <laughs> 10 grand. Mm -hmm. But now... I realized that maybe it's better you you don't make as much money uh, quickly and you make it over and you and you longevity is is my focus where back in the day I just wanted to you know make money as quickly and as easy as possible and now I realize there's no longevity in that and you need to plan four five six seven years down the line have you ever had any big competitors trying to buy you we've had a few <clears throat> conversations but we kind of didn't entertain the conversations not the big big players just like the medium people and the reason is you know right now we're going like that so it will be the wrong time to sell we only just entered into dubai turkey portugal india so we sold the the rights for eight different countries australia so for now to sell it after six seven years i'll probably regret it in if i pass it to someone else and then you know in the next 10 years it's a billion dollar brand for example you know, I'll kick myself. So I think right now, it's not the right time. Where's the biggest market in the world for pizza? Is that America? America. And then I think India is not too <clears> far <throat> behind because the amount of people in India, you know, is ridiculous. Um, so that's somewhere that we want to... Uh, there's all complications, different countries, different complications. But I think we've got a lot to do before we... Around, like, locally, Europe, before we start going to America. Yeah, because India, but I'd imagine they pay less for the product. A lot less. So how does it how does it work then? Do they sell more? They have to less? sell more. You'd have to find local suppliers. You know the whole thing, the the currency exchange, getting the items into the country. Mm -hmm. There's so many uh, categories that I've found in this business and in probably all business that when I first started off, I didn't plan for, I didn't expect. Even things like tax, VAT, you know, legal costs, um, even down to like someone collecting the rubbish like council rate business rates everything there's so many different mm. categories it can be overwhelming and i can understand why a lot of people give up so if i had someone next to me who'd already walked that route to give me advice and say don't go with that accountant go with that account don't go to that solicitor because even the wrong accountant you can lose a ridiculous amount of money only recently we found like a good good accountant for the last couple of years sweet wasted time and that's more important than money. Like you can get money back, but wasting time with an accountant that couldn't care less or a, a solicitor that don't know what he's talking about mm -hmm. or a trademark or copyright um, attorney that has got no idea what's going on. You know, you need to make sure you've got them things sorted from the beginning where I can give that advice to people now when they ask me what's the best solicitor to use or what's the best EPOS, what's the best till system, what's the best website developer, mm -hmm. all these things, it all adds up and it's all time at the end of the day, you can't get your time back, so better not to waste it.
When did you start making money? When did you start realizing, okay, it's working? Because when you when you become successful and you're working towards something, you never really enjoy it. It's when you look back to when you started mm. to where you are now, you think, fuck me, how did that happen? Mm. Because in the process, you can't enjoy it because it's a constant hustle. Yeah. Be bigger, be better, get more money, do this, do this, do this. And you don't enjoy it because it's a 24-7. You never switch off, no matter where I am I'm in the world. I'm thinking, what next? Where do I go yeah. now? How do I get that guest book country next? It's it's, you've got to be careful not to fall into that trap mm -hmm. of chasing numbers. Mm -hmm. Like in the beginning, I did. And I think once you fall into that trap of chasing right. numbers, you're on a on a on a hamster wheel, and it will never end. You just burn out, or you just never be happy. If your main goal is money, then there is no then there is no goal because money is infinite. So the goal is to build something and to create something because that you can achieve. If your goal is money, then it's never ending. Like back in the day, I, I always like in school times, I said, if I make a grand a week, I'll be happy. You know, I'm good. And starting the business in the first maybe two years, we made about 50 grand, so about a grand a week. And then I realized it's nowhere near enough. And I said, if I make a hundred grand a year, that's it. I'm good. I won't want anything else. And then after maybe the third year, I made a hundred grand a year. And you think it's not enough. Maybe it's not even enough because I'm greedy. It's not enough because in this day and age now, you know that the price of everything going up, 100 grand is not as much as you thought it was. So I think probably to answer your question, when did I say, okay, now I'm kind of good or now I'm, uh, I'm making money? Probably after the f fifth year when I made a million pounds and I had a million in my bank and I sent a picture to my mum. That was a kind of milestone. And now we're turning over, that was two years ago. So now we're turning over, you know, 15 million. Um, so, I, yeah, you can't, you have to be very careful that you don't fall into the trap of chasing money. And because money doesn't bring happiness at the end of the day. And you realize that once you, once you make money. That, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. when you tell the guy next to you, they, they don't listen. Because even when yeah. people used to tell me, like big successful people, they said, look, don't worry about the money. The money will come. But when you don't have money and you come from nothing, that is your main goal because we've been dropped into this system where everyone needs money to survive and it's always in your face, social media, yeah. the television, movies. So it's very difficult to not fall into that trap of chasing money. Yeah, we spoke about that in Dubai. Like, mm. we're just, what is it all about? That's we're chasing it. something. I'm staying in a big fucking fancy hotels and and it's not enough. It's not. But it's crazy how that is. It's when, I wish everybody could experience it. Jim Carrey says that. And I'm nowhere near the level I'm going to go to. But he says, I wish everybody could taste fortune and kind of fame to understand. It's not the it's answer. It's not the answer. Yeah. But, but, but believe that is the answer to make a happy Until life. Until it's too late. Yeah. So that's why I say to people, because they're not going to listen to what you tell them the same way I didn't listen when people told me. If money is your main goal and the nice cars and the big house and all the rest of it, if that's if you believe that's going to make you happy, if, if you believe that's going to make you happy, then my advice would be go out and get it as quickly as possible. So then you'll have at least the rest of your life to realize what the your real uh, targets and aims are. Because if it takes you your whole life to achieve that, and you're 60 years and you finally you know you're the big millionaire, and then you don't realize, I think you'll end up quite bitter. So I'd say go out there and get it as quick as possible if you believe that is what's going to make you happy. How many people are in your team now? It's a small but strong team. We've got 11 people in the office and we've got 11 drivers and people in the warehouse, maybe 25. So you've got to build the warehouse, get the product to then deliver to all the shops? Mm. But again, we didn't need to do that. We could have given it to a third party, sit back and relax. But number one, consistency and quality. If everyone's doing their own thing, it's def difficult to you know keep tabs on them. If we're the ones supplying it and we're going to the shops delivering and we can see what's going on inside the shops, then it's a lot easier um, to keep consistency. How much stock is a shop filled with and for how long? Depends how busy they are, but on average, maybe three or four grand a week. They're ordering from us three or four grand a week and we've got 150, 160 shops. What happens if there's a shortage of food? They borrow it from a local shop. Is or, that what it is? Or they emerge, they can come to the, our um, distribution centre or, you know, if it's an emergency, emergency, then obviously they buy it elsewhere, but yeah. Why are you still so hands-on? Especially making, though, like you say, you can relax, but it's more in it. Probably I've got trust issues <clears throat> giving that uh, responsibility to someone else and always worrying. Because you can be sitting at home watching TV while someone else is doing the work, but you're still, in your mind, you're still working, you're still worrying, you know? Mm. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night 
to go to the toilet I can't get back to sleep Because it's just instantly you've got a million things on your mind I've got to go here, I've got to meet this guy I've got to fix that problem Or someone calls you three in the morning The van's broken down or the warehouse is, you know And that's why a lot of people around me Friends, family, they all work, you know, nine to fives I don't, I don't have that many people that have businesses around me And sometimes I envy them Because, yeah, I'm driving a Lamborghini and a Rolls Royce And living in a big house but they work a nine to five, they go home and they switch off, they spend time with their family, they go on holiday and they relax. And I envy that because I thought I would be able to enjoy those things as well by having a business. As well as the money and the financial side, I thought I'll be able to, you know, relax. And having a business, you'll never relax. I think the only time that I will relax fully is if I sell the business. That is the only time when it's like you hand over the keys, sign the paperwork, then maybe I'll relax. Yeah. But then I'll be thinking what to do next, most probably. Yeah, I think when you're so hands-on in something and then to give it up. It's difficult, well, I used to man. always think, okay, make this, retire in five years, ten years. You can't. What are you going to do? Yeah. Life becomes fucking boring. Like you say, when you Play wake golf. up, you can't switch off. <laughs> you can never switch off. And Dana White says it. He says everybody chases to be an entrepreneur, but he doesn't realise people are working Christmas Day, New Year's Day. And like you say, envy people 95, they might have cracked the code. Yeah. Working for someone else, getting their money, they know when to work, they, know, they don't know, and they know when to stop. They've got their holidays. And if the warehouse, don't have burns, holidays. If the warehouse burns down in the middle yeah. of the night, they'll go and get another job. You know? Who gives a fuck? Mm. It's the pressures of, but we do reap the rewards 100%. also. 100%. Like we travel the world, stay in the best hotels, travel the best, eat the, eat the best foods. We can take it for granted. I think people ask me, what, what do you spend the most money on? And food. That's what I enjoy the most, food. Yeah. And that's why I think I'm in the food business. But eating at nice restaurants, trying different foods and traveling, I think that's the real, especially traveling, that's the real, you know, goals, targets. Because what's money at the end of the day? You can't take it with you. You know, we all, we all go into the same size coffin and, and, and that's it. Do you go into other places and check out the pizza? Yeah. Nah. yeah, you, yeah does yeah, everybody yeah, do yeah. that? We've got people to do it, but I do it. I like to be, as you said, hands-on. So I, I do it myself. And looking at the big players in the game, like you mentioned earlier, like Domino's, the product, maybe 6 out of 10. But the service, 11 out of 10, you know. And that's the thing. Sometimes customer perception, not just with them, but with anyone, if you get a crap product, but it's on time and it's piping hot and you know it's going to be there on time and it's piping hot, then people order it. Sometimes you go to a, a restaurant and, you know, and if they're really, really nice to you and they, the hospitality is good and the food is a bit, people still go back there. You know, if, if you go to a restaurant and the food's nice, but they treat you like shit, you're not going to go back there if you feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, everything's to do with the thought. Even when you go on holiday, even you're having one good conversation with the staff, you go back to that same hotel 100%. just and because the way you made you feel. As we said, in Dubai, the service 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. If you're going to open a business in Dubai, you can't open like a little kebab shop on the corner. You need to open something, you know, extravagant and, and good service. Mm -hmm. So I think it differs from the UK. In the UK, I think you can kind of get away a bit with just people eat. It regardless but i think um if you i think dubai sets a high standard and if you can but it's finding the people where do you find the right staff i don't know why they're so happy in dubai and they get paid next to nothing somewhere yeah. how was just eating delivery because that's been around what eight years now i don't mm. know maybe i don't even know that's me just guessing but mm. does that enhance your business make it easier it's a it's a they don't like me saying this and i was speaking at an event last week and he came up to me after and he, and he introduced himself it's a necessary evil you know, they bring you customers and they take a massive slice, a massive slice to the, to the massive 30%. And if you're only making 40% margin, you're left with 10%. But what do you do? Because everyone's on it. So the likes of KFC, McDonald's, um, Tortilla, some big names, they've literally just jumped off a of delivery and they've done massive billboards around London saying deliver who? <laughs> Order directly. You know, yeah. but I think it's bad for business because nobody communicates anymore. Nobody's in restaurants. That's why mm. nightclubs and stuff are shutting down other things because yeah. people don't know how to communicate. Lockdown's fucked everybody's mind. Turning everyone into like robots. Yeah. To sit home, order, eat, work. How was lockdown for you though? That must have been hard. Honestly, it went well. Yeah. I know a lot of business struggled. I know a lot of people that found it very difficult and businesses failed and obviously family got separated um, and for me as well. But in terms of um, 
in terms of business, they went through the roof. I was the same at podcast, everybody else was talking because they were too scared to yeah. travel. I was on down that yeah. motorway releasing three podcasts a week. I thought, <laughs> fuck everybody else. I was, everybody was only thing they could do was watch TV. Just yeah. give them new content, new content. My numbers boomed from 220, I think, to 222 because everybody was scared. I thought, fuck that, I'm working. I was getting pulled all over the time, fined all the time. Never paid one fine. I thought, fuck this. You know what the mad thing was? Before lockdown, about two weeks before lockdown, um, I took my family away to a little cottage in the middle of nowhere in Buckingham. Um, and nice, like peaceful, relaxful, and then watching television, lockdown. But we were having builders in our house do do work and uh, they had to stop the work because they couldn't so they let the house was left in a in a in like a building site we couldn't go back and um i said to the lady who owned the cottage i said we can't go back and thankfully she let us stay in the cottage so we were in the middle of like a forest in buckingham for like three months until they allowed everyone to go back to their house and the builders finished the job so that was an experience and uh just goes to show in business you you never know what's around the corner and you need to be ready to adapt to the situation even with the war recently the, the prices have gone through the roof of flour so you know luckily we stockpiled so that we can shield the stores from that increase but it put a lot of people out of business where does the flour come from Flour comes from Italy, but obviously the wheat that they get comes from could be Ukraine, could be mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, my friend he does the camper vans, and he was he used to get parts from Russia, mm. and it fucked his business. Mm. It just shows you, but the wars fluctuate the kind of the market of mm. what's big and what's what's wrong at that time. It just kind of it goes up and down because a lot of fuel mm. right through the roof. I think it was mm. like two over two pound a liter at some point when I think mm. the Russia and Ukraine kind of thing started. It's mad though. What what's what makes a good entrepreneur? Um, being able to adapt, perseverance, just uh, being creative. If it, if I had to put it down to one word, it would be say be creative. Because I I reckon, if I was given a a task of given I don't know a a product, you know anything, a product or a service, car washing, and I forced myself to stick at it. I, I think I could make it, maybe not as successful as, as, as this, as, as far away, but I reckon I can make it, you know, semi-successful because I think it doesn't matter about the product. It matters about the the marketing. It matters about the customer perception. It matters about, you know, it's not the product. It can be anything. Why are these big companies so successful? They're not selling and they're not selling gold dust, you know. That's why I wasted a lot of time in my bedroom thinking of businesses like stupid things like jetpacks and things that were going to like change people's lives. But then you don't need a complicated product and you don't need a, a, a special product. You just need a special determination to make that product successful and get it to people. Mm -hmm. and that's all it is. Same with a podcast. Why are other people's podcasts small and your ones, you know, massive? It has to be. You have to be something different. Everyone has to have something different. It can't be exactly the same as, uh, as someone else's. What did your mum say now? Yeah, she's... Um, Did she see the vision or is she thinking when you come up with a new idea, okay, son, like, <laughs> do you know how that way when you fail and you fuck up? It's like, when I was trying to come off the, the gambling and the gear and yeah. you relapse and then you relapse, you say, no, I'm off it again a few weeks. You can see people thinking, well, yeah, okay, good luck, but you're thinking, nah, it's not going to work. You know what it is? Your, your family and your friends are always going to uh, root for you and, mm -hmm. and push you and tell you it's fantastic, you know, and, and that's great because you need support. But it's your critics that you learn from. It's the people that are complaining. It's the customers that, if you're lucky, will take the time to complain. Not the ones that complain all the time, because you know people, they complain about everything. But customers that actually give you um, constructive criticism on what was wrong so that you can fix the issue. But yeah, my mum was um, obviously proud. In the beginning, she used to make the, uh, we used to sell waffles. She used to make the waffle mix at home. She used to make some pasta because it was like a family. It weren't a, it weren't a franchise. It weren't a, it was just uh, my shop and mm. my mum helping me like make some food. Obviously, as you grow, we, have, we haven't managed to do that, but she helps now with like customer complaints and um, she replies to emails and it's good to be able to bring your family and friends. I've given certain friends jobs in, in head office, not for the sake of creating jobs, but if there's something there to do, and although some people say don't give, don't work with your family and friends, it's worked well. My brother and sister opened the shop. They sold it now because it's very stressful. Um, but to give them opportunities and to help them, but you need to be willing to work. 
it doesn't matter if you if it's your family your friends giving you a job or you know tom down the road you need to be willing to put in the effort because if you're looking for an easy way out people can spot it especially me in nando's i i used to go to the toilet five times a day because i worked out if i go to the toilet five times a day and i spend there five minutes i've saved like half an hour of work time them kind of mentalities is not going to get you get you far um but i remember when i made a million pound and i sent a picture to my mum on my, my bank account and she just replied with a smile it's good that she's not um too impressed with you know materialistic things it brings you down to earth because you think when you make that million pound you know gold is going to fall from the sky and it's mm -hmm. going to be massive celebration but then you just realize it's, it's just it's just another number on in your bank account isn't it yeah that's all it is how do you then take it to new heights new levels what's the structure plans now because now you know the tools and techniques that you need to be successful like how do you then level up now and use everything that you've learned to then go bigger and better I think people, you need a good team around you. You can't do everything yourself. And that's what I've realized. You'll burn out, you know, and, and some people, they can't deal with the stress. Also, some people are built, I I think, to start businesses and to grow them to a certain level. I think I'm one of those people that can start businesses and take them to a certain level, 150 stores, 200 stores. But then there's people out there that are no good at starting businesses. They're the kind of corporate people that take businesses and take them to the next level. So I think different people have got different skill sets and it might be that I'm not the best person to take it to the higher level in all honesty. And I think you need to admit that to yourself that you don't know everything and that you need people with better skills around you. So maybe, I mean, I've interviewed other CEOs of big brands to potentially, you know, get them on board, but the amount of money they're asking for, I think I'll do it myself. Yeah. You know, 200 grand plus bonuses. You're talking about quarter million pound a year. I'm thinking for that money, I'll do it myself. You look at Greg's and stuff as well. It's just Smashed a cheap, it. cheap product. But Smashed how many it. stores has that got? Thousands? Smashed it. Yeah, they're, I think in COVID, not in COVID, sorry, in the recession, they're the only brand that excelled. They smashed it. Simple. Anyone can work there. With us, we need skilled chefs. People can get things wrong. With Greg's, you know, you take something out of an oven. oven and you give it to them. Small shops, high turnover, high footfall locations and... You know, credit where it's due, they smashed it. Who are the biggest shops like kinda in the UK? Yeah, I think Greg's, Greg's, and Greg's, stuff. Greg's in, <clears throat> in terms of food, Greg's. And it's not that every Greg you see, the queue is out the door. Fiverr, you've got your sausage roll, your juice, your cake. Simple products. Basic yeah. fucking shit food, basically. Yeah. And if, like you say, people like basic, people like fast, get enough quick mm. munch before they're back. People only get half an hour lunch break, yeah. 45 minutes. Know what I'm saying? It's supposed to show in it a simple <clears throat> product. Um, but they've been around a long time. Let's be they've been around a long, long time. Yeah, I was watching 20, a documentary. 30, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Or even even more. Longer. So for the fact that we've been around for like six, seven years, we've got a long way to go. But you've got the structure and the platform now to fucking take it wherever you want. See when you start making money, how, what's that feeling when other people see you start making money? You know what it is, I think. There's people that are jealous and there's people that are motivated. They're the two. It gets split. People get split into two different, from my experience, people get split into two different categories. They're either inspired, motivated, or they hate on you because they're jealous. There's only them two. And, you know, I meet people driving around in a nice car. It's a conversation starter. And, you know, people will come up and congratulate you. They'll be interested. They'll be inspired. They'll be motivated, which is fantastic. And then you've got people that will, they're not interested in being motivated or inspired. They just want to, they want to hate. But at the same time, you don't know what's going on in, in everybody's life. You know, everyone's dealing with their own obstacles, their own, their own struggles, their own problems, um, business and, and non-business wise. So I don't think you can really judge people on face value sometimes when you meet them in the street and their reaction to you because you you've got money you don't know they might have been millionaires and they lost everything you know so i think um and the worst thing that i've experienced is probably and the saddest thing that people it's the people sometimes that are around you you know family friends partners that are the ones that hold you back and put you down and what makes it even worse is they don't always mean to intentionally put you back and hold you down but everyone's mind mentality is different and you know sometimes when you do big things you know people take it it's hard to explain but i think 
yeah, that's probably the saddest thing that, that not everyone, you know, they want to see you progress, but maybe not too much. And sometimes they put you down and hold you back just because of their own perceptions on, on life and things. And, and sometimes it's the people closest to you, unfortunately, that, that are the ones that do that. So I think then it comes down to a very difficult decision. What do you do? Do you care about what other people think? And not only other people, the people closest to you. And do you stop your journey and your plan? Or do you just say, fuck everyone and, you know, go full steam ahead, even if it means you might damage relationships and, you know, so I think that's, that's down to everyone's, you know, I've lost people around me. And if I didn't have a business, I would have spent a lot more time probably with them. And I've damaged relationships because I've been more focused on business and the stresses that that, br that brings. But again, you can't complain about stress. We had a good friend of mine um, in our in our group and we didn't hear from him for a few days. So me and my um, me and my friend went around to his house and uh, knocked on the door, no answer. So my mate lifted me on his shoulders and I, I climbed through the window and we found him there hanging. And that will be in my mind for like, till I die. And that's nothing to do with business stress. That's to do with, you know, life stress that some people can't deal with. So you don't know what everyone else is going going through and i think you hear it all the time but just to be kind man just to help people but everyone's so busy in their own uh, they're in their own journey in their own bubble that sometimes it's difficult to be so uh, caring and and considerate about everybody else yeah that's the only thing when you lose people that you love are, who are close to you and you start doing well because you wish they were on the journey with you mm. Same as my dad and that, he would have loved the people I interviewed and what I'm doing. And yeah. He would have loved every fucking minute of it. So when you do it, there's always an element of something missing. I don't know if I would, maybe if he was still here, our friends were here, I would still feel the same anyway. I don't know if that's maybe an excuse. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's just my mindset in a whole. You only realise when it's too late maybe, innit? Yeah. But even my dad, he when he when I, he when he's, he's dead now, but I didn't have the best relationship with him. But I remember when I first started the business, he'd joke about, when are you going to come and pick me up in a Rolls Royce or a Bentley? And he passed away probably about three, four, five months before I got I got my first nice car, Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show it means nothing, isn't it? You know? Yeah. It means it means nothing. You can't take it with you. And I think the most important things in life are the people around you and the places that you visit. Everything else is just a bit of a distraction but yeah. maybe we need to be distracted with something yeah. because otherwise we might go off the rails creating memories is important because all we've got is the memory and the feeling that we had at that moment while creating that memory so it's difficult though because everything that you crave and everything that you create when you get it <clears throat> is you think is that it, it mm. doesn't feel fucking nothing nothing sometimes you can sit a lying bed at night and the memory will come in of where you've took it and nobody believed in you people laughed Nobody knew what a fucking podcast was in Scotland mm. six years ago. Laughing, people talking shit online. People yeah. who they weren't even in my company, <laughs> but they had something to say. Sick. As if they knew me, they didn't fucking know me. You weren't good enough to be in my company back then. You fucking mug. <laughs> it's uh, and part of that when you get the success, you, part of me thinks about the haters. Mm. People who spoke shit. I think yes, it they must you. burn themselves. And as sad as it is, that's it the is. way my mind yeah. is. I want to fuck them over by the success, mm -hmm. and it's. Mm -hmm. It's a bit, not cringe, but I know I shouldn't, but I, I, I do thrive on showing people what can be done and proving the doubt was yeah. wrong. It's a beautiful feeling. And it's more than the money. I think people won't remember you for what car you drive or what watch you wear, or what house you live in. They'll remember you for what you've, what you've built, what you've created and the people that you've helped. Mm -hmm. So I think to build something that will be around a long time after you're gone, I think that's more important than yeah. buying a nice car. Cause let's be honest, that you're not going to keep anything you know you don't actually own anything money's got no someone said to me not too long ago money's got no keepers it's only got spenders because you just spend it that's it you don't actually mm. it's never really yours is it it's always in the bank anyway it's the bank's money you just are able to spend it so i think more important is yeah the places you go the people you meet and the uh and the things that you create who do you enjoy it can you enjoy it? Obviously, listen, you're driving a Rolls Royce in a fucking Lamborghini. Something's yeah. okay, but like you say, the novelty wears off. 
I don't know what that what that is in the mind, but people will always tell you an awful it will always wear off, no matter what watch you get, what car you drive. You just you get up in the morning, you don't go to your bed and come in your pants because you know you're what you what you're driving in the morning yeah. or what watch you're putting on. So it does go and then you forget you even have those things until you get the newer toy or yeah. the newer watch. There's up. always something new yeah. coming out. It's a cycle. I think food food is my What's personal food to eat? everything. I travel far and wide to try different foods and uh, obviously nice food but then also like street food <clears throat> it's like food i'm a big food person what's the biggest pizza brands in italy italy they're not around they're not on the franchise and they're not on the brands. They not? starbucks closed down domino's closed down they're on the which is good because i think that taught me to be different they're on the independent family run unique old school cash cash in hand um, Love that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah that's 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 it and i think that's good because when these big brands and it might be ironic and hypocritical talking about this because we are now becoming a big brand but when these big brands take over and the high street is getting wiped out and you've only got the big tesco's to, and all the little people are getting it's you know because it wasn't too long ago that i was you know a little a little person in a little shop mm -hmm. in rose hill you know struggling how, how is the credit card machines and that when they take a percentage do you lose money that's another thing as cash is going out and they are trying to push cash out through covid through whatever excuse that they can find and i can understand being a business owner why it's easier people can't steal you don't have to worry about uh, customers robbing or like the, getting robbed on the way to the bank dropping off the money but at the same time uh, we're turning into these machines these robots and it's mad because you get charged a percentage so back in the day andrew tate said it you give someone 50 quid you owe them 50 quid you give him 50 quid because so you owe him 50 quid and he gives me 50 quid because he owes me 50 quid we're all even if i pay him by card you don't get 50 quid you get 49 and a half you pay him he gets 40 and then you yeah, over transaction over transaction the bank own it. it the bank own it so i think i'll be very careful yeah that's what like you say speaks if you've got 50 quid now, pay you 50 quid and then pay it, pay it, pay it, however you're paying it round, mm. you've still got the 50 quid. Mm -mm, but with mm -mm. the bank, the transactions, the 1%, 2%, 3%, it's mad. they're just constantly taking. That's the big business. That's the business to be in. Banking business, and yeah. Money. It's a... Uh, I feel as if the, the being, there will be a cashless society within the next five years, 10 years. Um, <laughs> It'll be mad. It'll be mad if you owe money. You go for a speeding camera, it will just get taken automatically. There'll be no, it's, 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 it's scary when you think about it. And I think that's why that might motivate me a bit as well. You just got to make your money and get out. Mm -hmm. But where are you going to get out to? I'm one by one, all the countries are going to follow suit unless you, you know, buy yourself an island. Listen, look at Dubai though. I've, three times I've been this year and every time it's been raining. Mm. So you don't know what's happening with the weather control when are they doing that so people don't move there because everybody seems to be setting up businesses, moving there, better weather, tax free. There seems to be a lot of stuff happening there, but it's just going where you feel safe, going where you feel comfortable. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. There's no point making money if you can't spend it, innit? And I said you gotta go where you feel safe because if you even in London, like what's happening, I mean, luckily where I live, I always wanted to get out of Mitchum, not because it's like so bad, just because I like the countryside. I want I want peace and quiet. I couldn't live in a city. And when I was looking at flats like centre of London, three million quid for a mm. two bedroom flat, I wouldn't even want to live there, even if it was for free. Mm. Like where I am now in the countryside, it gives you you need to have time off. You need to um, you need to you need to have peace. I think that's what it comes down to. The goal is peace and happiness, not not money. Although you know, on my road. I'm probably the poorest guy, as I said, but it's good. I'd prefer to be to be that. It's a nice house. You might be the poorest, mate, but you'll be one of the fucking youngest. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I remember when I moved in and we were getting some building work done and, and my mate, the builder, uh, he, he said to me, um, oh, the lady next door, she came and said, oh, do you know who's moving in? And he said, um, yes, yeah, my mate, he's got a pizza shop. I said, what, he's got a pizza shop? What was his nice house, three million pound house, a pr <laughs> private estate. He said, he's got a pizza shop. And he was like, yeah, and straight away they thought I was dodgy. And when I come around with all my mates and that nice car, they definitely thought I was dodgy. But then you get talking to these people and then their husband, her husband was a, a tech guy who built um, banking security apps. So I started getting talking to him and he put me in contact with a guy who builds food apps. And then the guy next door to him is the CEO of um, Wimpy Homes. So when I need planning permission on my house, I spoke to him. So 
the problem is in this society and we say Dubai is better but uh, we haven't lived there so I don't I don't think we can be 100% sure but people want to see you win and they network together when I was growing up and where I was growing up it's very difficult to trust people and to see if there's a, a an ulterior motive when people are trying to help you as sad as it is because people are hungry so people you know are hungry and when people are hungry they do uh, silly things mm -hmm. and they don't think about the longevity they think about tomorrow the weekend they want to eat um, so they think about the short term get rich quick but I think where where I am now you know you can tell people that you are around and when you work together you get places a lot quicker and you get further whereas if you try and do everything yourself and you know you try and fuck everyone off and just try and make a quick bag whereas if you work together with people that's where that's where the power is when you're when you're networking and you're because you don't know everything and i think people need to understand you don't know everything sometimes you need to shut up and listen mm -hmm. what's your daily routine like daily routine now i wake up i'm not going to pretend i wake up at five and you know meditate i wake up at eight have a coffee I'm out the door by 8.30. I've got a driver that drives me to the office because our office is an hour and a half away. So hour and a half a day, hour and a half back, it's three hours a day gone. I've got 11 points on my license as well. So I've got a driver. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, that's I've how got a big So I do work on the, on the in the back of the car, get to the office, work, um, visit some stores, meet new people, investors, drive back to my house, do some work. And when I get home, Still got some work to do that I haven't finished or stuff that came in late. And that's basically it. That's why the only time I can really relax is not very often. But I think Can you switch off? And as I said earlier, no, I don't think you can. Because it becomes always, an obsession, doesn't it? Mm, and I think the only time I'll ever be able to switch off is if I just, you know, fully get out and just sell Save everything. everything. Um but that's about it. But that's why I try and incorporate travel. Like when I saw you in Dubai, I was there for work, but obviously mm -hmm. you, you relax to an extent and I don't think I'd ever have time to travel anyway unless it was to do with work. Mm -hmm. We've got a franchise show coming up in uh, Brazil. You know, are we going to open any shops there? Probably not, but I get a bit of a holiday. I get to meet, see what the, see the industry, the well. see the, yeah. And also do some work. And if we get someone that wants to open a shop in Brazil, fuck it, I'll go over there every, every few months. Mm -hmm. It's mad, one it? when you talk about selling up, <clears throat> because we understand the chase. That's exactly it. But that becomes an addiction of, like, I was happier at the start, at the chase of hitting a thousand views, ten thousand views. I thought, yes, I'm fucking massive. Yeah. And then you get that chase, and then uh, you understand the patterns, how it works, it's, and there's no really buzz with it anymore. It's the journey. It's yeah. not the destination. And mm -hmm. it's. I think you you also have to remember. That your perception changes don't think that everything that you think now is what you're going to think in a few years and that you're right about everything because the perception changes you need to learn to enjoy the journey not the destination mm -hmm. something i can relate with um only fools and horses that that comedy a lot is when he finally became a millionaire they found that watch in the auction and and he made like seven million and he moved out of his council flight in peckham and moved into a big house on a private estate he went back to the uh the empty flat and I had like a sad conversation with his brother because it's the chase that keeps you going. Once you, you know, you're out and you've got the money, then what? Then there's no chase. There's no, there's no focus. That's Excitement. where people lose the plot because yeah. there's no focus. And these people that have got billions, they still continue, not because maybe they're greedy, but because that's their life. That's their focus. And maybe if you stop doing that, people turn to drugs, people turn to drink because they want that, that buzz. It's the boxers as well. You look at boxers, 40s, 50s, still come back for that last fight because they love the part of the training, the yeah. walking into the ring, the excitement, that fucking high. Let's not understand people need the money as well, but it's some of them don't, and there's just something. Look at Tyson Fury, and I've said this many times, one old rebels had all the money, ended up in his biggest depression of his life as well. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's about... I, I I can't really have the answers we can talk about. No, no one knows. You can't really say because there is people I know who's really wealthy who no one knows. But yet I know some people with nothing and they're fucking happier than the wealthy ones. Every billionaire I've interviewed, none of them are happy. They portray the happy image, but mm -hmm. they can't switch off. There's something wires in their mind that's missed where they can never switch off. And I think, why not enjoy it? 
Hmm. How could, it's easy for me to say as yeah. well, but it's how do you enjoy? It? I think helping people recently that I've had a little bit more time on my hands. I've helped some other brands and they're they're small time. They just started and helping people and seeing their journey. Oh. Because as I said, if you go with the wrong accountant or the wrong solicitor, that could be the end of your business before it's even started because you made that mistake, you know, or the the wrong web developer. You waste time, you invest money, and you ain't got extra money to. So that's the end of your business. So I think if I had someone next to me back in the day telling me, "Don't do this, do that. Don't go that way, go that way. Call this guy, don't call that guy." You know, I would have got to where I am a lot quicker, but I probably wouldn't have learned as many lessons. But I think I would have saved a lot of money, would have saved a lot of time. So I think helping other people um i think if i do finally switch off that could be a, a way forward or start something else i've seen accounts fuck people yeah move their money don't see it again mad madness you've mad. got to be careful because money is the root of all evil mm. i spoke earlier i had a beautiful girl on africa brook and we we're talking about yeah, money she says one thing that you could change that make the world a better place i say take away money if there's mo no money, there's no greed, there's no power, there's no destruction. They say absolute, they say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah, right. and I've seen it now <clears throat> with money, how when you make it, you start making money. And we all want to survive. But when you're making money as well, people don't realise what actually goes straight back into mm. building a bigger company, getting guests, travel. They it, don't understand it the overheads. Ends. And it's consistent. It never ends. And you can't, as you said, switch off. So you need to continue making money to continue, you know, keeping the machine working. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, what else is there? Other... Do you ever worry about losing it? Losing the business or losing... Everything. It? People have had more and lost that. So it's... I think I, I'm, I'm one of these people that worry get a lot. Get it back again. I'm, I think I'd get it back, but I still worry a lot. A lot. So when I make the... I'm very... I, it might sound funny saying it but and shocking but i'm difficult at making like big decisions i i'm i have arguments with myself in my head and i have fights with myself and i worry a lot maybe it's a good thing because you don't make silly mistakes but sometimes you might not take the risks that will that will pay off so for me i don't think i lose it because i worry too much and i keep that you know reserve um i in terms of in terms of business but you know never say never but touch wood we're all right but i can see why people do because they want more so that means it's like gambling you want more mm -hmm. so you've got to put more down and then if you win it becomes addictive because you're winning and you carry on making big risks and then if you lose also you want to carry on because you want to get it back so it's difficult but it's so a never ending chase mm. it's a never ending chase Mm. it's just never it's a tiring chase yeah <clears throat> but like you say to find the balance which i don't know if i do that's the longest we took off there i feel as if it was needed um to have a bit of stability and spend time with the family mm. because it's but there's opportunities arise all the time with me with new guests and come here never ends. and i never say no never <clears throat> ends because i think i understand how that could potentially lead to that other guest and it's just a game of chess for me Mm. to get to that bigger guest to hit america to crack america you can't take the foot off the gas and you for you personally you can't put someone else in charge yeah, because can yeah you want they can do what i can do <laughs> they're all shite that is why uh, <clears throat> how do you what's the plans for the future then where do you see you taking it where can you take it can it be a billion pound business i think for us to become a billion pound business we need to open probably a thousand stores um worldwide, worldwide. and that could take maybe if we do it correctly and we don't, you know, rush, that could take maybe 20 years. But like you said, at least there's a longevity. There's something there to pass on to like future generations instead of just saying, oh, fuck it, I'll take 25 million. I'm gone. Because what would I actually do? And it's up to that point sometimes that you don't, as you said, until it's too late. Like a year ago, I sold 6% of the business so I could buy a house because um, I was living with my mum up until then. So a couple of years ago, we sold 6% of the business for £2 million. And even up to the last minute of the money being transferred, it was all excitement. And, you know, yeah, like just the, and then the last minute when you get the money, you're like, oh, yeah. And then back to it again. So it, 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 people need to understand that it's, it's not what you what you think it is and that's why maybe that's why i worry so much but uh, because I, i've been through that phase of getting things that i thought were important that turn out not to be as important mm -hmm. as you thought 
but it's good to experience these things to then That's get great. that feeling to yeah. realise, okay, this is where I'm not going to get that excitement and fulfilment that I've craven. I think the chase of it and having some purpose of elevating yourself and reaching your little goals. Mm. Even when I reach those goals, there's no, it's just a, a feeling. It's no, I'm not fucking jumping up and clapping my hands. I celebrate myself. I celebrate yeah. myself and I go, fucking go on, son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody really sees it, but it's, it's the, just a good journey as well. Like, how the, we can't, well, listen, we're not complaining. No, we're not complaining. Do you know what I mean? But we need people to understand and you're, you're ahead of me, but it's, it's just try and enjoy because you can work a nine to five and just enjoy the time with your family. If you're providing for your family, you're winning anyway. Everybody's definition of success and happiness mm. is totally different, but you can be happy with fuck all. And I know people say I'd rather cry in a Lamborghini than anything, but mm. the real flex is not, not crying. crying at yeah, all. the real flex is trying to enjoy life with what you've got, and you can have a happy life with nothing. But I wish people could experience 100%. the other stuff to then go okay you're right and it's easier for us to say because we are experienced yeah we are experienced the finer things in life i think if you got if you ain't got enough or you got too much money or you don't have enough money it's going to cause problems regardless i think mm -hmm. it's about finding the balance because we need money to survive but it's not the answer so i think whether you got too much <clears> or not enough it's always going to cause problems for anybody that's what to be an entrepreneur what advice would you have for them learn to communicate you need to communicate with people because unless you are going to, that's why trading, I think, is so um, popular. And even when people are losing money, they're still doing it because you sit at home on a laptop or on your phone and you just, there's no, you don't need to communicate with anyone. You don't need to, you know, uh, you don't need to do much. And I think people look for the easy way out. Even courses, I see people selling courses, property courses, and um they're not even making money themselves when you check their, when their company their yeah. company accounts they're not even making money themselves but they're standing in front of a lamborghini and people are buying their course mm -hmm. some people might say well if you're that gullible to buy a course from someone that you've never heard of because he's standing in front of a lamborghini then you deserve to lose your money but i think the uh the main key is communication and creativity you need to be creative you can't do things the same as everybody else has done it otherwise you're just going to get to where they got you need to be different Plans for the future, brother. Tell me where you, what, tell me where you're going. Tell me what the, you're going to achieve. We sold the rights to eight countries: Australia, New Zealand, India, France, Germany, Portugal, um, and it will be just to grow in those countries even half as quickly as we've grown in this one. And I think just employ more people, more people, and step back a little bit maybe before it's too late and you know you burn out. I think that's the main. I find it difficult to sleep, I'll be honest. What's your biggest lesson in business so far? Don't be so sure of yourself. It's good to be confident. It's good to be, you know, um, affirmative, but don't be so sure on, you know, your only, you'll get a second opinion, you know, get a third opinion. I'm not necessarily saying go with it, but at least get other people's opinions. It's when you get fall into that trap of thinking you know everything, you know, you end up knowing nothing. Um, I think you need to know when to shut up and, and listen to other people. Mm -hmm. I know you've lost a friend to suicide. For anybody that's watching, that's maybe in a life of struggle right now, what advice would you have for them? Get out. If you ain't got money and you just need, and you, you can't afford a holiday to, you know, like a private island or, or, or somewhere like that, then you just get in the car and, and, and drive to the countryside. I, I do a lot of drives in the countryside. Luckily, we've got shops now there, so it's not like a you know, um, a drive there and back, but I can, I can go there for a reason. I drive in the countryside, listen to some peaceful music, like the Cotswolds, I, I go there a lot, and just be at one with yourself, and just, yeah. obviously, as we said, you can't switch off, um, but at least put yourself in the right surroundings where it's a little bit easier to try and switch off instead of just everything, you know, happening around you, just go and spend a day on your own and just and relax just leave everything and hopefully you know things if you're a business owner things will survive at least a day or two until you until you get back i'd say just find time for yourself just to switch off and try and switch off go on holiday and just travel i think travel helps but if you ain't got the money then then go somewhere in england go to glasgow <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you want to feel more fucking depressed bro <laughs> So for anybody, what's your social media links for anybody that's maybe wanting to get in contact, ask questions, or yeah. maybe maybe make franchise your business? Yeah, what's? business wise is um, Fireway Pizza, Fireway.co.uk, and personally, it's um, 
Instagram is me, Mario, and MarioLepo.com. Do you like to finish up on anything else, brother? That's it. We're putting together um, a small course to help people. So many people asking, what's the best, um, as I said, accountant, what's the best way of doing this? Who's the best producer or distributor? So we just put it into like a short course and it's available on the website. Good on you. Listen, you'll have a proof of how to make it. Thank you, bro. Listen, you know I'm rooting for you always. Likewise. Can't wait to see what you do for the future, brother. Keep smashing up. Cheers.